Hey folks, uh, this lesson is uh, for my most awesome kids that are looking ahead and getting ready for their upcoming quiz, okay, or test if you're at another school. Uh, this is a review on Module 5, Polynomial Functions. Let's get started here. So, hey, um, uh, in Module 5.1, we talked about transformations. This number is uh, that's in front of everything is a vertical uh, factor. It stretches it if it's bigger than one. It compresses it if it's smaller than one. And if it's negative, it reflects over the x-axis. That's what these three guys say right here. This number is kind of tricky right there because it's always the reciprocal. B, the bigger B is the the horizontal stretch it goes horizontal is left and right movement so if this was one half then it stretches it to the right by two by a factor of two okay and when it's negative it gets reflected over the x-axis and so uh, pretend for a second say this whole number right here not one over b let's say it was two okay say it was two then uh, 1 over b would be 1 half, and so it, re it would uh, horizontally compress it by a half. Okay, we'll talk about that. Okay, and then uh, this h and k is a translation. It translates it, remember, opposite same. So if that's a minus 3, then it goes to the right 3, and it goes the same, whatever this is. So if it's a minus 5, then it goes down 5. All right, let's try some of this, okay? So describe how to transform the, the graph of uh, uh, f of x equals x squared to obtain this related uh, function, g of x. Okay, and here's this groovy equation. All right, remember, this is a vertical stretch. In this case, it's a compression because that's less than 1. And since it's negative, it gets reflected over the x-axis. Okay, so it's a vertical compression by a factor of 1 fourth reflected across the x-axis. And that's negative 4 and 7, opposite same. So it gets uh, translated to the right. And then up, translated to the right, uh, 4 up 7, okay? All right, so let's find the inverse of this function, okay? So first, we have to um, uh, substitute in y for f of x, and then we solve for x, okay? So, oops, and let's go ahead and solve for x. And, and uh, so we subtract 4 on both sides. And then I, there's several ways to do this, you guys. I want to get rid of the denominator, and I want to get rid of the negative also. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 3, distribute. And we get that, divide by 2, and we get uh, that right there. And then now we got to switch uh, the x's and the y's. So now it's y equals that stuff. Okay, so the next step is to replace y with f uh, inverse of x. Okay, so if f inverse of x um, is, this, is this stuff, f to the negative 1 power stuff. Okay, so there it is. And, I, and I'm, I'm happy if you do that. Now, if they ask you to graph it right there, it's probably easier to convert this to this. So this this 2 goes for this numerator and this numerator. So this would be uh, for graphing purposes. So there's the y-intercept plus 6. And then from there, we go down 3 to the right 2. Remember that? All right. All right, so let's go ahead and answer some questions. So I got several of them. Let's tackle them uh, one at a time here. So what's the inverse of the origin? Okay, remember the origin is at 0, 0. So the inverse is that uh, to switch the x's and y's. So the inverse is also at 0, 0, which is uh, at, this, uh, at the origin. Okay, so the second one said, if the uh, x-intercepts of a function are 3, negative 2, and 5, what are the, uh, the inverses? Okay, well, uh, the ordered pairs for the x-intercepts are 3, 0, negative 2, 0, and 5, 0. So the y-intercepts, which are the... Um, the inverses are going to be, just switch them, 0, negative 3, 0, negative 2, and 0, 5, okay? So I think there's a question on there that if the x-intercepts uh, have three intercepts, do does the inverse have three intercepts? So I would say, yeah, okay? Uh, if the slope of a linear function is three-fifths, what's the slope of its, of its inverse? Okay, well, remember... In the, in the section we just covered, we had a function that was negative 2 thirds x plus 4, and so we found the inverse to be negative 3 halves x plus 6, okay? Look at these uh, slopes right here. 
they're the same sign, but they're reciprocals of each other, okay? So we can say uh, that the slope of the inverse function has uh, the reciprocal of three-fifths, which is five-thirds, okay? Easy. If a function is one-to-one, -one, then, then its inverse is a function, well... Okay, well, what's one to one mean? Okay, well, one to mean one to one means uh, from uh, module five two that um, each x input uh, only gives you one output, doesn't go to two outputs. Okay, and you're thinking, what the heck's that mean? Okay, look, here's a x goes to y, here's a x goes to y, here's a x goes to y, here's a x goes to y. Every one of these inputs goes to just one y output. And then for the inverse, you just reverse them right here. So here's an x that goes to this y, x goes. To, so it looks like all of these x's go to just one y. Here's a one to one. So the inverse is also one to one. So that means it's a function right there, okay? Functions are um, uh, when each x goes to just one y. I, I, I couldn't have, it would not be a function if this negative 4 went to this number and let's say, let's say 0, okay? It, it, it can't go to two different outputs right there, okay? Does that make sense? Remember that? Okay, so a function is said to be even. If we plug in negative x and it gives us the same function, f of x. Or if we're given a picture, it's symmetric over the y-axis. The y-axis is the up and down guy. So if, it, if the up and down guy, the y-axis is a mirror, then it's uh, it's even, okay? And uh, it's odd if uh, we plug in negative x and it gives us the, the opposite of f of x, okay? Or if given a picture, it's symmetric with the origin. Now, the best way to describe symmetric with the origin is if I can turn it upside down, and it looks the exact same. That's what uh, symmetry with the origin means, okay? All right, so here's some two equations. Are they even or odd? Okay, so let's plug in negative x, okay? So remember, negative x squared, a negative to an even power is positive. So this is going to be uh, 5x squared, a negative to an odd power is negative. So that's going to be negative x squared. So check it out, 5x squared is the same as this one right here. And uh, negative x cubed is the same as the opposite of x cubed. So, so this guy's even, this guy's odd, okay? Remember, if you see a picture, it's uh, if it's a mirror image across uh, the y-axis, um, uh, then it's even. And if you can turn it upside down and it looks like the same graph, that means uh, it's symmetric with the origin, which means it's odd, okay? Remember x, you guys, is left and right movement. This is x movement. So when we're changing x, it's this way, okay? And when we're changing y, um, and your book likes to call them functions, so f of x, that's an up and down movement right there, okay? All right. So uh, describe how the graph of g of x is related to the graph of x, f of x, and f of x equals x cubed. So this is our parent graph right here, okay? So g of x, notice uh, here's a cube, here's a cube, here's a cube. So how is it going to change this parent graph right here? Okay, so this one's going to change it to the right 2 up 3, opposite same. Do you remember that? Okay, opposite same. So that you just uh, translation to the right 2 up 3. Okay, this is A. This is out in front. Notice this is inside of the parentheses with X. This one's horizontal. This one's not. This one's vertical. Okay, reflection uh, across the X axis, compression by a factor of uh, one third. So a vertical compression by a factor one third reflected across the X axis. Okay, X axis is this guy. So whatever happens up here goes whoop, and goes down here. Okay. This is a horizontal, um, in this case, it's a, it's a stretch. It's a horizontal stretch because this is B right here. Remember, the bigger uh, this number is, the bigger it gets stretched. Okay, and this guy, this negative, is going to reflect it across the y-axis right here. So it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3 and reflect it across the y-axis. Okay, so let's sketch the graph of these dudes. Okay, remember this from... Module 5, 4, okay, you got to recognize 1, 2, there's 3 x's, so this is a cubic function. So um, uh, so since it's a cubic fun function, or degree 3, 
um, then it starts off and it's positive right here so it's going to start off over here and it's going to end up here okay and um, and since it's degree three there's going to be two humps okay sometimes there's two less than that or one hump or no humps i'm sorry so um, because it's uh, degree three one two three it's probably going to have one less than that so two humps it could have zero humps, but in this case it won't. So here's the x-intercepts, x equals zero, x plus two equals zero, so you get x equals negative two, x minus three equals zero, so you get x equals three. So here's the x-intercepts. Remember, it goes here and it ends up here. The closer these intercepts are, in general, the smaller the hump's going to be. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit deeper right here. So you're going to see a graph that looks kind of like that. Okay, I loved teaching that lesson, by the way. All right, so here's another one, two, three cubic equation right here. This one's negative, so it's going to start up here and end down here. Okay, the x-intercepts are negative 1, positive 2, positive 3 when we set those equal to 0. So there they are right there. Okay, and remember, it's going to start up here and go down here. Now, these guys are really close, so the hump between these guys are going to be much more shallow than the hump between these guys. It's going to start up here. It's going to go down. I don't know how deep it is. It's just going to go down and come back up. It's going to be a shallow little hump and keep going down like a negative slope right there, okay? All right, so there it is, something like that. Again, I don't know how deep that is how high that is. That's why there's no scale on the y-axis right here because we just don't know yet until we get to uh, pre-calculus and calculus right there. All right, here's another one. Okay, here's a 1x. Here's um, There's two of them in here. Whoops, I didn't mean to move that over. Let's see, where's my right there? Okay, there's two of them there. So there's two x's here. There's one more. There's one more. There's four x's. So this is a fourth degree equation right here. Okay, all right. And then uh, notice uh, negative two is a double root. X plus two equals zero. X plus two equals zero because it's a double root. That means our, our hump is going to be tangent on this x axis right here. Okay, and since it's positive, you guys, it starts up over here and it ends up over here. And in my class, I said even degrees, fourth degrees, I said touchdown. Even degrees are always touchdown. Touchdown Raiders, okay? Raiders are my school mascot right here, okay? So it's going to start up here. It's going to end up here. So it's going to go through that guy, curve back up. How deep is that? I don't know yet until we get to pre-calculus. This one I know is going to be a little bit shallower, so it's not going to go up as high as this one is going to go down. And then um, and then it's going to, just going to shoot up. And where is it going to shoot up? I don't know. Just got to make a, a guess. It's going to go right up through that intercept right there. All right, you guys. I hope you guys do fantastic on your quiz. Take care.